Walter Pelzer, Director General with the German Space Agency. Thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space and welcome to Singapore for the GSTC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. Um, and we'll just separate. Uh, ESA has just signed a letter of intent here in Singapore, and which is quite, you know it's great to see the Europeans here. A lot of French as well. Uh, it's, we're really uh, pleased to have the Germans here as well. Maybe give us an overview of the agency, and then also maybe the business uh, that uh, you're doing here in Singapore and the region as well. Well, the agency, um, the German Space Agency, um, is an agency. Uh, working on behalf of the German government yes. and uh, we have actually in our mission three main topics. The first one is uh, supporting our industry to be more competitive uh, uh, and coming up with uh, some USBs and then coming up with cutting edge science. So we are very happy that uh, within our programs we had within the last seven years uh, two Nobel Prize uh, winners. Nice. They worked for the uh, Max Planck Institute but on, on our, on our uh, missions and projects. Um, and the third topic is uh, that we um, yeah, represent Germany with an ESA. ESA gets uh, money through the space agency to put bigger missions into practice. Missions uh, so that all the member states of ESA um, join yeah. over there. They are not the same states like the European Union. Sometimes this is uh, mixed up, so it's not yeah. the same. Um, and they put missions like juice or earth care into practice and this is something no European state would be able to do it alone. Missions above 1 billion euro. What type of heritage? I was speaking to the Philippine Space Agency this morning. They're about five years, oh, sorry, since 2019. About the same as Australia as well. What's the heritage of the German Space Agency? Oh, this heritage is kind of difficult because we are actually, we went through a kind of uh, development. At the beginning, there was something called DARA. Um, it was a separate unit yep. um, and working really as a, as a space agency, similar to the um, way we do right now. Then, um, actually it would integrate in the DLR as a R&D facility. So we are under one roof, the so big R&D facility together with the second pillar, the space agency. And the beauty of this concept is that our space agency, we have a little bit more than 400 people, but I'm also a member of the executive board of DLR, so I have access to the whole the R&D people. Got it. it goes beyond, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we save a little bit of taxpayers' money nice. by just joining these two entities in, in uh, one roof. And um, actually that was called uh, space management and uh, five, six years ago, um, we uh, made it a little bit more transparent by actually coming up with the German Space Agency within DLR, but we are actually two separate uh, unities when it comes to reporting. So I do report to the government and R&D reports to a Senate. Yes. Uh, and what type of space assets are you involved with at the moment? I'm I might, that might be a hard question to answer, but yeah. some of the key key missions that you might have on at the moment? Well, actually, um, also I would threefold it a little bit. Um, um, overall, our last budget was uh, 1.6 billion euros. Right. So that's actually what uh, what we are able to, to spend on different topics for ESA, uh, international cooperation and uh, within within Germany. And um, I start with, with this special infrastructure which might be interesting especially for Australia because yep. they are interested in uh, one of the, the yeah actually technologies uh, we developed um, uh, together with Fraunhofer um, we have a so-called um, SSA SST center together with the Air Force right. so it's a joint joint uh, inst yeah facility uh, Air Force and uh, German Space Agency under one roof on soil of the um, Air Force, where we make space an uh, SSA SST, and um, yeah, we are also responsible for setting up the European catalog for space debris and parts. Got and it. So okay. To actually fill it in into the to the US one, which is uh, the one we we work on, and at this center we collect all the sensor data from from Europe, so all other European. Sensors, uh, sensor data to uh, UDEM, this is the place where we have our facility and they collected, come up with this uh, European catalog. So this is one, one part, a yep. little bit different one and um, we came also up with, with a sensor called Gestra, a special one, 256 erase, um, sending up some kind of fence 
and I mention it because Australia is very interested in it. Okay. And they got already in touch with the company. We handed over the patents uh, so that now it can be commercialized. And uh, this is something we are very happy that uh, that Australia is in, uh, interested in. At least that's um, up to our knowledge. And um, second part is, um, of course, uh, bilateral. Uh, agreements. We have very good contacts to, to Australia as well. Yep. Uh, we have an inofficial office over there where uh, um, R&D people, uh, DLR people um, are sitting over there and uh, are connected to um, our friends over there, to Enrico from, from the Space Agency, yes. for example. I, I have regular contact with him. And um, uh, bilateral projects are, for example, Grace with, uh, with uh, JPL, yes. where we came up with um, outstanding data. Uh, for just about to be launched, right? Actually, it's supposed to be launched in, uh, yeah, in a few yeah, years. Yeah, just slightly ago. delayed, right? Yeah. No, it's it's not delayed. Actually, it's um, it's a series. It's actually, at the beginning, it was actually a mission to um, yeah, to measure the magnetic, the gravity field of the Earth. Yeah. And the data were so good that we even were able to um, make um, some statements and some uh, research uh, available regarding groundwater. And so we can now see how groundwater develops based on the satellite data. And this is important if you know that groundwater is moving away, moving, or getting disappearing. Pissed, yeah, disappearing. Um, this is a pretty good sign for stress on the surface yep. and so we actually can um, in advance take countermeasures and this is from my point of view something I want to, to do with space. I want to come up with data not to show look we have a problem, I want to avoid the problem and GRACE yep. is a wonderful tool to do that, that's what we do with, with NASA, JPL for example, bilateral also within Europe uh, um, with, with uh, France we have an excellent uh, mission, we will come up with an outstanding uh, I hope outstanding mission uh, for, for Methane. Uh, we work together with our Japanese colleagues, for example, when it comes for exploration uh, for Mars. So there's a lot of um, uh, bilateral, multilateral cooperation. And then with an ESA, of course, we it's full-fledged what we yep. do over there. We, um, does, we the, the, does the new letter of intent open up doors for you or from an ESA's perspective? Uh, or is that something you still drive again from the German Space Agency yourselves? Because again, it was the first letter of intent that they've signed here in Singapore. Well, actually, this is something as ESA is putting into place what the member states asked yes. it to do. Um, this is actually paving the way um, um, that we can do something through ESA. Um, as I mentioned, um, our budget is, is uh, with 1.6 billion. We, we can do something on our yep. own. We have 400 people um, even in our, uh, with, with, let's say, access to more um, workload. Yep. Um, but there are other member states which they do not have any, any uh, space agency. So they use ESA as space agency. So also member states with, uh, without any um, space agency as member of um, ESA, they can use ESA as space agency, so even these countries can Got now it. cooperate. So the, this is the beauty of ESA, um, that they actually en enhance uh, member states uh, to develop technologies if they do not have their, their own capabilities. How often do you come to Singapore? Uh, I hope this isn't your first visit, but yeah, how often would you be in the region yourself? Well, let's say it this way. I have been frequently to Singapore when I was in automotive industry. <laughs> it's it. my first visit to the GSTCE. As Director but General? For sure not the last one. Okay, fair enough. And will we see you in Sydney as well at IAC? Uh, I guess I will be over <laughs> there. So uh, I promise to Enrico that uh, I will be over there. And um, if Beautiful. possible, I, I keep to my promises. Uh, maybe a, a quick takeaway from the GSTC. Uh, you've been here for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, how have you found the conference and any sort of early takeaways for you? What's, what's been impressive in the exhibition floor? I'm really impressed. Um, Singapore is, uh, and Austin is uh, able to actually collect the, the main players over here, get them together. Yep. Uh, the discussions are straight to the point uh, without any coffee breaks, uh, which takes forever. <laughs> so uh, this is really interesting. It's a wonderful place for, for uh, yeah, small and medium-sized companies which are not Politically involved, everybody who really wants to do something yep. is, is uh, it's a wonderful place to be over here. Um, they are more open than the U.S. market, let's say it this way, or Europe. Yep. It's easier to, to connect over here. 
So from this point of view, um, definitely an excellent place to be and congratulations to the organizers, um, Austin. Well, I imagine, yeah, they fit that mold of uh, doing business. I imagine that's what the Germans yep. are, are inclined to do, as would the Singaporeans. Uh, but well, um, Walter Pelzer, uh, the Director General with the German Space Agency, thank you so much. I've got about 20 other questions, but uh, just given time, thank you very much for joining us today on Australian Space TV, and we'll see you at IAC in Sydney. Looking forward to it, and again, thank you very much for having me.